coming to you live from the University of Texas at Arlington. And I, along with several other panelists from the University of Louisiana Monroe, Yeah, 
<laughs> okay, for me, and this may not have been the hardest thing, but I feel like this is the most important thing that I just kind of learned this summer, but better late than never. One thing that I learned is like, I started, I know I want to work in the sports industry. Like that's my goal. Like my ultimate goal is to own a professional sports franchise. That's what I want to do. But what I started, I started interning my freshman year. I've been interning with the athletics department for the last three years. And then now I'm starting to branch out to go to different internships. But what I found out is like, they want you to have, for no matter what field you're going to, they want you to have as much experience as possible before you go into your career or grad school or whatever. So if I would have known beforehand that, you know, they wanted, diverse experience and all that type of stuff beforehand, I might have done two years in the athletics department and then another year here, another year there. But now like now that I know that, okay, it's like, okay, well, where am I going to intern next year, blah, 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 trying to rework it. So focus on your end goal. If your end goal is to be a doctor, start trying to volunteer in a hospital. If your end goal is to be a teacher, start volunteering at a school. Like start volunteering, start looking for internships early. Like they're really important. Like even though I spent the three years that I've been with the athletics department, I loved it, I've learned a lot, made a lot of connections, all that type of stuff. But just focus on your end goal. Your goal is to graduate with a degree. You're, yeah, you wanna hang out, you wanna meet your friends, but your goal is to graduate with a degree. Yeah. <laughs> I say always travel in pairs, or if not, like, like she said, call somebody. Like when you go to the library or somebody, or a class might come meet you or something. Cause you never know, I mean, campus is lit at night, and you think you say, At all the parties, but they don't go to college. It will happen. You be like, wait, aren't you like 20 on the Why are you here? You don't even go here. Um, but another thing about traveling at night and traveling alone, we have what we call a Mav ride or dial, well, you dial a number, a, like a little golf cart will come pick you up and it'll take you like to the library, to your dorm, like anywhere until like 1 a.m. And so it'll just keep going, keep going, keep going. So you don't have to walk at night. You can get in a little taxi thing and it'll take you around
every single yeah. regular school because every school is going to have like five absences. You know, um, don't take them all on one week or, you know, like that. Just try to bring them out. Because I had a couple days where I was like, look, man, I really don't feel like going to class. You know, make sure your parents don't know. You know, I'm going to teach you this on my phone. Yeah. study your junior and senior year in high school, you'll be set your freshman and sophomore year. Number two, write myprofessor.com. Get the easiest professor who gives a review before the exams. Go a couple days before the exam. Go over the review. And number three, have a friend. Like she said, text your friend and tell them, hey, I know when um, like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 came out, went to the release date that night, skipped class for two weeks. <laughs> Your teacher or your professor is going to give it to you. It has everything on class from how they grade, how they expect you to like behave in the class, everything. Some teachers do like point systems. So like if you get um, homework, they'll give you like 20 points for doing your homework. They'll give you like 100 points for each test. Like some people do it like point systems. And if you have like over 500 points, you get an A. If you have under 200 points, you get a D. Or, like it depends on the teacher. So make sure you read the syllabus so you know like how they grade one. And then two, I go to class. I go to class, I sit on the front row. Okay, now sometimes I may be in class on the front row, not in a little bit, but I'm there, okay? Because me, I'm the type of person, I can sit there and kind of doze off, but still hear you. Like you ask me a question, I can give you the answer. Like that's just how, what works for me. So even if you're sleepy, get up and go to class. Because your professors, like even no matter what size your classroom is, your professors know your face. So now if they see you sitting there, but then they see the desk next to you, like empty, they remember, okay, she was sitting there, he was sitting there, okay, oh, he needed like two more points to get an A, got that two points, keep it moving. They see your face, they're gonna remember you when it counts. So make sure they see your face. And in freshman year, a lot of you are going on scholarships and things like that. You have to keep a certain GPA in order to maintain those scholarships. Me, I want a full ride. I have to keep, I have to keep a certain GPA, so I'm making sure that my grades stay up. So make sure that you go to class, you get study groups, you go to the resource centers, they have math centers, writing centers, every type of center you can think of, they have it. Just make sure you find it at your school. Keep your scholarships, they're gonna come in handy. Yes. Writing center is your best friend. Those will basically write you over. Yeah, I know. Like, they'll like, go through all your work, tell you what you need to do, and you just redo what they just told you. But it's also about setting up your schedule too. If you know you're not a morning person, don't take morning classes. Morning classes. Set up your classes where you your first class is like 11:30 or 12. We have a mandatory morning class. Then you have to. Yeah, then you gotta have to go. So, but like I said, if you really do good your junior and your senior year in high school, you keep those notes. It's gonna be a repeat your freshman and sophomore year. So, like I said, I skipped those two weeks, but I still, you know, got an A in the class. I have like a 3.9 something. Yeah. So it's not really about going to class too much. It's about working hard and retaining the information. So. And I'm still going to add something to the scheduling classes. Like for my first semester, my earliest class I think was around 9 o'clock. And I was, I was late because I would go to class. And I would just like, sit there and wait for my second semester. Like my latest class was at 10. And then, well, my latest class was at 11.45. To me, that's too late. Because that's when I started using them. Uh, skipping classes and stuff like that because I don't want to go. You know, I was just uh, around the house and doing whatever. You know, so don't schedule them too late. I'll say like 10. That's probably like the latest. That's a good time. But 11.45 and after 10, if you're not going to want to go. You know, after 10. I know that's how I feel. Alright, also, pay for positions here in this policy. In my psychology class, if you miss one class, you drop a whole lot of grades. Yeah, some, some classes are like that. Make sure you go, because some professors do trip. You miss like two classes, you down to a B. Just saying. 
get you into it, ask people to read, stuff like that. But not all professors. So get ready to sit there and listen to someone talk for almost two hours. Like just get mentally prepared. Cause me, like I heard about it, my sister told me about it, but I was just like, okay, yeah, they're gonna talk. No, some of them talk just like this oh for two hours. And then it puts you to sleep. And that's why I nod on the first row. <laughs> but just be ready. Just saying. Okay. okay. So study groups. I was gonna say, um, if you might want to study just a tad bit before you get there, because people will get off topic. Like y'all could just like talk about, I don't know, sales, and somebody will tell you, oh, last week I did this, and y'all having a whole other conversation. Y'all need to study. Personally, sometimes I can study with study groups, but sometimes I can't, or I have to like. Sometimes I would say, don't study with your friends, and y'all will totally get off topic. Like y'all start talking about totally stuff. Y'all was sitting in the library at like two in the morning and realized y'all didn't study your dog on thing. And y'all just wasted the time. That's what I would say. Or like be that one person that keep people on task. Like it's okay to take a break because you can't just study straight because you have to let it sink in. But you want to take a break, but be that person that, okay, y'all better get back on track. So that's what I'm one thing, it's not really about studying, but if you, when, you, when you're making a schedule, if you can't pronounce your professor's name, <laughs> you don't, don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know, I had, I had a professor, his name was, um, man, I don't know his name. A-C-D-E-M-G, C-D-D-Y. Yeah, that, that's what it was. And then, when I got into class, he started talking, I was like, like, he talked just like a man. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just had to walk out and go get my schedule changed. Because I'm not going to sit in the class. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't understand nothing he's saying. You know what I mean? That's pointless. Like, you're spending your money on a class. You know, if I just sit there and you can't understand nothing, it's not going to end so make sure you get a professor that you can understand. Oh, I think it's a mix of, of multiple things when you study. Um, going to class, listening to the notes is a good way. Reading the book, highlighting it, and then writing your own notes is always good. Uh, when you go to your study groups, be the one that kind of leads the group and kind of teaches it to the other people. Uh, I think that always enhance. If you can teach it to someone else, then you really have a good understanding of the information. Don't be the one that's just sitting there. Because you're going to have to restudy when you get back to your dorm room. So don't waste time. You might as well try to have someone else ask you questions that you probably don't know to kind of work it out. So. OK, go ahead, because we have a lot of questions. Okay. So we got to keep going. So like my chances of getting into college are pretty good. Like I don't just study the reviews, because this doesn't guarantee that you're going to pass. 
So make sure that you look at the book because some of the questions they don't have the book, mm -hmm. some questions do. And I, I know that a lot of stuff, like a lot of questions that I missed on the test, they were in the book and I didn't look at it. So make sure you do.
so it came to a point where I just had to pick and choose. And like she said, like, I'm not gonna lie, it was one night, I got on my knees, I prayed, I cried, did whatever I had to do. And next morning I got up and I, like, I was late for practice and I was like, maybe this is a sign, you know, I'm not supposed to play football. And then later that day, I realized I was at dinner when I was supposed to be at workout. And that's when I just realized, man, maybe it's time, you know, to give up football. So I gave up football and now it's working for the business. So I mean, like she said, always, you know, keep God first, always be your prayer, you know, it'll work. Can I ask you? Yeah, go ahead. Um, and sometimes, like, I feel like, I'm like Dr. Nick, I get stressed out a lot too. I feel like we as people or young people, young adults, then we put pressure on ourselves, pressures to, you know, hey, I want to get it, I want to have 4.8 or GPA this semester. I want to be, I want to pledge or, you know, I have to work too, you know, like some people have to work to pay off their tuition, but this is the only time, like, we're, we're young. We have time, we got a whole bunch of time to get stressed, but now, like, just, just realize that, hey, it's not this easy. If I don't get an A in this course, it's okay. You know, I did my best. As long as you know that you did your best, you know, it's okay. We, we don't, like, it's not that serious. You sometimes just have to really just look, look like, back at it and be like, okay, do I really want to, I mean, I don't want to sound so harsh, but do I really want to kill myself because I didn't get an A in this course or because, you know, like, just really, you just really have to pray about it. Like, I, she said she broke down in the shower, you know, crying. Sometimes, sometimes that's just what you have to do. Like, I'm sure Ms. Sharon, Y'all can attest to it. You know, when you graduate from college, yeah, I got a whole bunch of time stress. I got bills, I got to do I got to do this. So just realize that, okay, I'm young. Let me have this fun. Let me not, you know, worry and be stressed out now. And don't who it is. Yeah. Hey, it's, it's, it's okay to cry, bro. Like, really, you cry, Zach? Like, honestly, this is my, this is my best friend. <laughs> this is my best female friend right here. She was, she was with me through everything. I was, I was there for her. But at the same time, like, she done, she done seen me come, like, I, I come to her and cry sometimes, because it just got that hard. Oh, uh, ladies, he's sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, sometimes, some, don't, think, don't think you just too hard, too cool to cry, you know what I mean? Don't, don't think you're too cool to cry your mama again and be like, mama, I'm struggling. Can you please help me keep praying for something, you know what I mean? Y'all not too grown, y'all not too hard. Always, you know, always. That's real talk. That's just for all of you. And like as you're trying to grow of my church, like my faith has grown so much from being in college, like it's crazy because I used to stress about little things. But then it got to the point where it's like, like okay, I'm not about to kill myself for an A. Like in a couple of years, I'm not gonna remember if I got an A, a B, or whatever in this class. So I'm not about to stress out over a letter. Don't stress out over a letter grade. Please don't. It's not worth it. Alright, let's move on to some other questions. How is it being a virgin in college? Oh, I <laughs> um, <laughs> um, 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 I've been okay. I I walk around with this ring. I got because this is a lot. Okay, I have to, I walk around with this ring, and so many times I've gotten asked, "Are you married? What is that? What is this? What is that? Are you married? Oh my gosh, you're married!" I'm like, "No, it's a Peter ring." Then they'd be like, "What?" So then I have to explain it. When I like, ladies, it is okay to be a virgin. It is so much. It is it okay? It's great. <laughs> and it's one of the best things because some of my friends they're not, and then they come crying to some of these issues because oh I was in his room last night and so and so and so. I'm like I don't have to deal with that. You know now I've got to deal with oh I slept with him, I slept with him, look around campus, yeah, and like you know because somehow everybody's connected. And it sex leads to a lot of trauma. But I'm gonna say dudes will pressure you because many times dudes are pressure me and be like oh. And they be trying to talk that game, and you just be like, "Really, this is stupid." They would be like, "Oh, you're a virgin, and we experience some, some, some." I'm like, "No, but y'all still don't need you." Because I have made like a, a vow to God and everything that I'm gonna wait till I'm married. And I tell y'all, ladies, do too. It's so much stress free things. Like you don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. And girls, boys do the same thing to you every single time. Like I do too. We do sit now. This is the last word I was talking to. So no, don't listen to that. And then, it's not hard, honestly. Like, just realize who you're talking to. Like, when you're talking to that person, you'll know if that's the person that you just really want to be with. Because you got to realize if you want to be with this person before you give up something so genuine that you got to, like, hold on to. Because you don't want to just give away to something that's precious. That's something you've held on to for so long. And you just give it up to somebody that you're not going to even be with for the rest of your life. That's pointless. So there's no reason to be afraid. And when you have sex, you get emotionally attached. Believe it or not. So 
old tag and reels. Yes. And because you're going to be like, oh, and then you're going to get mad because he was some other chick the next day. And it's just crazy. Yes, yeah. yeah, some girls, they go crazy. Yeah. Like, seriously, they will. But another question, like, from what she was saying, like, that's what I was saying. Just keep it. Keep it. My, keep it jar. my thing is, I think of it like I'm a gift. God gave me this gift, and I'm going to give it to my husband. Like, I don't care who says what along the way. Like, I see the end goal. And when I get married, that's a different story. But right now, like, no. I'm a gift. I'm waiting in the story. So I say just look at it like that. And ladies, just be aware of your name. Troy and say, let me put a, uh, on the book. Like, yeah, on the book, you might have a fellow approach you. Hey, can I stop by your door and try to get that? Like, you got to just be aware of your name. The hot the, the summer before we went off to college, it was three of my friends who we were all virgins. When we came back from uh, uh, when I came back from college in December, I was the only one that was still a virgin. You know, and that I mean, I'm not judging them for what they do for the, for what they did. Maybe they found somebody that was special that they thought was special enough. But, you know, um at the end of like she said, you know, and if you're not a virgin, that's okay too. But, you know, at the end of the night, this is how I think about it. When I'm having my heart honeymoon night or, or whatever, you know, dad would tell my husband that, hey, you know, you are the only one that I've been with. You know what I'm saying? And men, you know, they simple. That's that's kind of what they like. That's, that's what they like. You know what I'm saying? So they, they have these types of egos and, you know, testosterone and all that stuff. They like this. Perspective, surely from a, a finance major. Oh, I see. It, <laughs> 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 sure, it is a very costly expenditure. If that one time, a sucker, boom, you're pregnant, you know, got a baby there. How much money would you have to dump into support not only a woman that you probably don't really care about too much and a baby as well? So think about not only where you are now, but in your future what you're going to do from a financial standpoint as well, because it will cost you, and it's not worth it, you know what I'm saying? So, I just want to say, honestly, dude, sometimes, well, most of the time, we find that very attractive when a female is actually a virgin. No matter what, no matter what your homeboy said, like, we could do what I would and find out, like, well, she a virgin, you like, for real, bro? I respect her. Like, deep down, we respect a female that's a virgin way more than a female who just gets around with everybody. Even though we might act like, you know, the best of girl that we want to get around with everybody, it's truly and honestly, it's really not what we want. We want a girl that's like true to herself and true to God at that.
It was a blast being able to volunteer and give back to our community. We would like to take the time right now to thank all of our donors, Regis Hair Salon, Seasons of Change, Office Depot, Tarrant County Community College, and all of our volunteers. You made this event a reality. Thank you. Excellent Teen Choice is a nonprofit organization, and we have several events coming up soon, including the Clee Conference, Mad City Money, 